Hello folks and welcome back to the channel. It's that time of year again. It's winter time. One of the best cruising and scenery parts of the year. So let's have a little chat about it. Now I love the winter on the canals because the views, the scenery, the landscape, everything changes. It's so picturesque and beautiful when you have the early morning frosts, the snow covering the boat, the ice on the canal, watching the birds skating on it as they walk along on it. But for me, most of all, I love the mist that comes off the canal when you watch it rolling in off the fields and rolling down the canal. It's absolutely spectacular. But it's also the most dangerous part of the year. If you decide to cruise in the winter, there's a lot of things that you've got to consider. Everything is slippery. From the gunnels going down the boat, to the towpath, the roof, the bow and the stern, everything is slippery. And if you're going through locks, you've got to be so much more careful, especially if you're travelling alone. I personally, on my first year's cruising, I went in the canal um, during the winter time. It was uh, late November, early December time. The canal is absolutely freezing. When people say to you, is it cold on the boat? Yeah. If you're in your house and you don't turn your heating on, is it cold? It's the same on a boat. My stove is currently on about 170 degrees. It's well in the nice heat range. Of course it's going to be cold. But you imagine going into the water because that water is so much more colder than it actually is on the land. This is why your boat will remain cold because there's at least two foot of your boat actually sitting in the freezing cold water. After the first year, I, uh, when I went in, I do, I, I do a few different things now. Um, an example is I've always got a spare mobile phone and a full battery bank charged up. Um, because generally you'll have your phone in your pocket if you go in the cuts then it's going to get wet, no more phone. But if you've got a spare one ready on the boat, it doesn't have to be an expensive one, just one that'll work, it doesn't matter. I've always got one and I know exactly where it is. When I set off cruising, you get everything ready for the day and off you go. One of the things I do, which I point out to a lot of boaters is, if you're single-handed especially, I always prepare more fire first thing in the morning that's assuming of course it isn't hot and there's no hot embers in there to start the fire off going generally when I get up my fire's gone cold anyway because I don't bank my stove up so it stays hot all through the night I've never done that I'd, and uh, I don't do it anyway so even in the winter time but I get my fire ready so if I go in the cut Straight away you've got to get out, you'll get your clothes off, jump in the shower if your water's hot of course, and light the fire. When I went in the cut, um, I got out, I immediately moored the boat up after I'd done what I had to do. I then sat in the shower, it was that cold, I sat in the shower and I ran the water cold because I was in there that long trying to get warm. I then sat smack bang here in front of the fire with that blazing for hours and it was still two in the morning and you're still freezing cold even though the boat is warm but if you've got to mess about and try and get that fire ready it's a handy tip to have it ready just in case you need it so it's up to you whether you do it that's one of the things getting I back do. to the locks they're extremely dangerous and deadly all around the year more so in the winter because of the weather conditions and hardly anybody being around so if something went wrong the chances are it'll be a bit of a while before anyone come to aid you rescue etc 
the locks are extremely slippy anyway winter time the you know the like a skating ring you've got to be really careful what I generally do is when I'm planning a journey I'll tell people where I'm off to where what stretch I'm going through so if there's any problems somebody always knows where I am if I'm more up I tend to more in isolated areas away from everybody not in cities I don't like them I'm not antisocial that that's just what I enjoy I enjoy the countryside so I'm more in the countryside so you're more rural you're more on your own I send people a picture text off my canal uh, map planner and it shows people exactly where I am if something happened on the boat and you needed the emergency services as well as family or friends or whatever you've automatically got that thing you can go to instead of thinking bloody hell where am I what bridge am I by what's the nearest road you've already got it and people know you could phone up a person and go phone the police tell them I'm at blah 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 I'm sorting this out do you know what I mean? So that's one good thing that you can fall back on. The canal on. also freezes over during the winter time. I wouldn't advise anybody, regardless of what information CRT or any other governing body give you. If you don't feel safe, do not move. It's as simple as that. The ice will damage your hull. I guarantee you, it, it, at the very least, it will damage the blacking on your hull. It could also cause boats to sink GRP cruisers with plastic hulls you imagine a large sharp shard of ice going into that the boat is going to sink because of the hole that it causes it isn't worth doing your engine will be so pushed going through the ice it just is not worth it it's not safe to do and unless it was you know you've got to get somewhere and there's no two ways about it I, I personally never travel in There's the There's always plenty of moorings in the winter time. I've been in the area where I'm at moving around for the last, I would say, five weeks. In all that time, I've seen two boats and they didn't moor up. They was travelling straight through to wherever they were going. So there's always good moorings in the winter time. The visitors moorings which are normally 12, 24 hour, 48 hour moorings, every one of them in the winter time automatically becomes a two week mooring. So you can stay there for 14 days. You don't have to move, you won't be penalised for it, you can stay there. That doesn't of course include mooring on a water point where there's a mooring and it's just a, you know, a visitors one hour, two hour. You can't moor on water points and it's a really bad thing to do so just don't like do it. any time of the year you've got clothes for that season in the summer you'll wear shorts etc i know i'm wearing a pair of shorts now but i am absolutely roasting on this boat so plus i'm sitting next to the bloody fire so that ain't helping but yeah we've all got specific clothes this is the case when you're moving your boat hats gloves good all-weather coats as well as waterproof trousers good non-slip boots things like that they're all going to come in handy and you'll get your use out of them so it is a good idea even if you only use them for a few weeks of the year at least once you've got them you can always fall back on them they're always there for you to use and it, even in the summertime we get thunderstorms and things like that if you're moving your boat in the pissing down rain it's no fun so the stuff does come in handy so it is a good idea to get yourself some good gear. It's a good idea before the winter if you can to give your engines a service. Doesn't have to be a massive one but the bigger the better. I did mine about uh, so I did mine about October time so the weather was still good. I changed the belts, all the filters, oil and diesel, I changed all of the oil. I did everything that I needed to on my boat. I even checked the injector system. I even took all the battery bank apart and checked all the batteries. I've currently put new batteries on my boat. Um, so I've just changed them basically uh, and put some newer ones on. But the solar, you can't rely on it this time of year. You know, you might get 
30 volts, 0 0.2, 0 0.5 amps. That, that ain't going to do bugger all apart from just put a slow trickle into your batteries. That, that's all the solar's going to do. So that means you're going to have to run your engine if you're using an inverter to turn 12 volts into 240 volts. So it's always a good idea to make sure that engine is purring like a kitten. If you can afford a generator, get a generator, even if it sits on the back of the boat and is used for a few weeks, a couple of months a year. They're worth the weight in gold. It's constant power. And if you get a good one, a modern one, they're, they're very cost effective and don't use tons of fuel anyway, because it ends as if you've got it on for all that long any, anyway during the day. But the engine is key to everything. As long as you've got that engine turning over, it's creating current, it's creating electricity. So that means you can use all your phones, your gadgets, your gizmos, etc. It's a brilliant idea. You've got to get it done. Engine servicing isn't hard. I've done it myself. I've done videos on it. I've done videos on my solar. Everything that I'm talking about, there'll be a video to it on my channel. So they're well worth a look at if you've got a bit of space. Also time. with the engine, it's good to make sure your antifreeze levels are topped up. Your stern grand, sorry, your stern gland greaser, the, I think the beer's kicking in. <laughs> you, know, you know it's working when you start mumbling. <laughs> yeah. Some people have automatic ones um, which will be fed off the canal water. So it's like a self lubricating system. I don't, I have. The brass tube full of grease you give it a turn what you've got to remember is if you're sat somewhere for a day two days two weeks or if you're in a marina you could be there for months you've still got to turn that greaser every couple of days at least give it half a turn that will keep the grease packed in the stern gland and that will keep your boat all the more dry in the engine bilge don't let people say or tell you that you only need to do that when you're cruising. No, 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 no. You do it when you're moored up as well. Keep that engine bay nice and dry. A little drip every now and again, that isn't a problem. Don't worry about that. But turn that stern gland greaser. Just half a turn every couple of days. It's also a good idea to keep um, a few spare parts, oil filters, fan belts especially, things like that, engine oil, filters, they're not expensive and at some point you're going to use them anyway. So you might as well keep a spare and get them while they're going a bit cheaper as to buying it in a year's time or trying to get one when you're broken down in the middle of nowhere. That's why it's a good idea to keep spares. So I would if your budget, you know, can stretch to it, get to a fray, doesn't matter, your boat's not going anywhere, your engine's definitely not going to be changed, the parts will just sit there. So it makes sense to just keep them just in case. It's also a good idea to keep a good stock of long life foods, i.e. rice, pastas, canned goods, and even long life milk. This time of the year, I start maybe um, October, November time, packing my cupboards out with tinned foods, rices, pastas, long life milk. I've got packs of long life milk and think because I, I love my cups of tea in the morning and that. So it's a very good idea to get all that luck because you don't know what's going to happen on the canal system. An example of that is a friend of mine a couple of years back. Um, I can't remember what canal he was on. There was a, a small breach in the canal. They shut the canal down for three months. He couldn't move his boat for three months. People um, to do with the CRT was having to bring water and things like that up to the boat for him because it wasn't close enough for him to go and get, bring back and things like that. So that's what was happening with that. So if you can, if your budget r will run to it, I've got on my boat probably at least three weeks worth of food on my boat so I could be in the middle of nowhere 
no shops etc and I can still eat well I can drink every day you know so it is a good idea to do that also it works the same with your coal your wood your kindling and your fire lighters you have to think to yourself how long will that last how long have I got heat on my boat on my boat I've currently got probably enough fuel to last me a month and that's because I cut my own wood I cut it I stack it I process the whole lot myself I know because of doing that how long it's going to last me but because I travel the system a lot I always have a mental note of places I've been where I know there's massive amounts of um, seasoned wood because it's better if it's seasoned there's certain trees you can use that aren't seasoned but by and large if the stuff's been cut a couple of years ago like an example right now where I am I know within two to three minutes from this very spot there's logs that would last me probably two months maybe a bit longer it all depends how much you use now if I move further up the canal I know where there's another pile of logs that nobody uses they're on the they're not on the towpath they're within walking distance it's fuel I you always plan ahead with things well I do anyway so I know I've constantly got that fuel so heat is a big thing on these boats plan ahead I don't pay for kindling I don't pay for logs I pay for fire lighters yeah I also pay for coal but since last year I was buying a lot of coal a lot of wood a lot of kindling I hardly buy any of it now and it saved me a bloody fortune just by doing a tiny little bit of work an hour two hours out of your day once a week not all the time you're set you must have seen my videos collecting the wood processing it and things like that if you're on my Instagram there's thousands of pictures on there you can actually see what I'm actually doing now then, um, if you're lucky enough to have fuel boats in your area these boats will carry gas coal diesel wood basically all your necessities for keeping your boat moving and keeping your body warm me personally I've never seen a fuel boat in all my years of traveling the system they tend to stick to highly populated stretches of the canal um, where there's a lot of moored boats there's marinas things like that you know and yeah they do a fantastic job if you're going to spend money spend it with the fuel boats because they keep a lot of people going during the winter they're fantastic people they'll help you out if you need a bit of help so yeah we, we talk about nowadays keeping money in the country jobs for people that are here etc etc you won't get a more you know job like that needs a little bit of help than the fuel boats because they do to keep them going they help a lot of people out so if you're lucky enough to have them in your area I would say use them me personally I was visiting a friend at a marina uh, well it's not a marina it's uh, offside um, canal moorings um, over in Birmingham and they were selling coal in their chandlery shop for what was it it was five 25 kilo bags of smokeless coal and that was 45 quid so that was a bargain filled the car up with that that'll last me the whole of the winter because like I said I hardly ever buy coal so anymore. while we're on the subject of the stoves it's a good idea to keep your stove in a good maintaining order check the fire ropes there's also a fire rope inside they're so easy to change I've changed the glass the fire ropes there's videos on that on my channel also get yourself a chimney sweeper you can get them for between five and eight pound on various websites that chimney in the winter forget about once a year once every six months sweep that chimney at least once a month during the winter time or high usage times it'll keep the channel open the stove will burn so much more efficiently and better so 
it's always a good idea to do that. If you've got CO2 alarms and smoke alarms, I have currently got three smoke alarms and three CO2 detectors. One's always up here, ones are always in the middle, ones are always at the end of the boat. Check them every month. The first of every month, do a little check. All you've got to do is press a button. It is, a, you know, it's not hard. <laughs> and then things will save your life in the event of a fire, in the event of carbon monoxide poisoning. Now, whether you realise it or not, everybody has an extra fridge on their boat. Whether it's on the stern or on the bow. And I'll show you exactly what I mean. These are so cold. <laughs> right. Whee! That's your extra fridge. You can keep out there bottled goods. I wouldn't advise you keep your milk out there because I guarantee you'll go to get it and it will be frozen. I wouldn't say I'd put fresh meat or cooked meats etc out there but for your bottles of pop, beer, things like that they're perfect. Look at that lovely cold beer one of the best in the world my favourite and it didn't cost me nothing to keep it cool so cheers Oh. What a point, man. But yeah, there's also, I like to call it smart mooring. If you can, park or your car, if you use one, where it's easily accessible to your boat, moor up where you're in walking distance to a shop, things like that. I mean, I move my boat, then I have to move my car and things like that, so I call that smart mooring. I'm mooring by where I've got a usable car park that's, that's free, basically, because the parking fees can be pretty ridiculous nowadays. But yeah, park by a shop, park by family, friends, etc. Get your moorings so you're planning ahead. Everything is always planning ahead. You've got Nicholson guides which show all the waterways and they'll show them in detail. You've got loads of phone apps, canal route planner, things like that. Plan ahead, look where you're going, look what's there, look what's feasible for you to get to and carry stuff. Because if you're moored up in the middle of nowhere like I generally do and you're carting stuff up and down the towpath, I'm able to do that, a lot of people can't, so smart mooring, use your head and make life easy on yourself. During the winter time, a lot of people, they'll moor the boats, they'll leave them for a couple of weeks, they'll come back and then they'll move it on a bit more, moor it up again and it's a progression, you know, they will winterise the boat. If you're living on your boat, you don't need to winterise it. I'm not going to go too much into it, but it's basically so pipes don't freeze and you know things like that there's videos on winterizing boats i'm not going to go into that because i i don't do that but what you've got to consider if you're leaving your boat for any period of time is during the winter the canals and rivers not all of them tend to flood they'll go the water levels will rise and they'll lower it's one of the easiest ways to sink your boat and uh, I wouldn't advise leaving your boat for prolonged periods of time. I've had people where I've been moored and people have moored by me and said how long do you stay now? Uh, and I've told them you know I'll be in a week, two weeks, whatever. Can I leave the boat? Will you watch it? Yeah, I'll leave the boat. Make sure you leave your phone number and the contact details, etc. Because if anything happens, I'm not kicking your door in to go and pump water out and stuff like that. For the simple reason, 
I might get done for breaking and entering. I'll loosen your ropes, I'll tie your ropes, I'll pull your boat in a bit more, but boats sink, it, it's as simple as that, you're on the water. I'm not kicking your door in and getting nicked for it. So you've got to use your head with these things. I know you might think you're helping out, you're not helping out, you're putting yourself in a predicament. So if you're going to do that, you've got to think ahead. So There's loads there more we go. could talk about, but it's little things and, you know, it's like nitpicking and stuff like that. What I will say is, don't think you're Captain Big Bollocks, getting pissed and going on a journey down the cut and mapping out the whole world because you're not. You're never going to do that. People make stupid decisions when they're drinking. My advice is I never drink when I'm piloting my boat. I never drink when I'm going out cruising. It doesn't matter whether it's the summer time, the winter time, whenever. It's a really bad idea. You'll make stupid decisions. You'll get yourself in trouble. I'm not saying be a teetotaler because it's obvious science. What I'm saying is there's a time and a place for things. Don't allow it on the boat. Don't do it yourself. Have a good time. It's coming up to Christmas when you're moored up. Everybody can enjoy themselves. You don't have to be drinking on the back of the boat and carrying on like an idiot. You've just got to keep safe because people don't realise these things are death traps the canal. There's, there's so many ways you, you can injure or kill yourself or kill others or injure others on the canal. The lists can go on and on and on and on. It's crazy and some of the things I've seen people do, it makes you wonder you know what what's rattling round in the head so the whole idea is just be safe enjoy yourself enjoy the canals so cheers and bye for now oh what a point